Hello everyone and welcome to the second episode of All the Mods 3. So last episode we set up a basic ME system for storage and in this episode I'm going to try a more reliable means of generating RF. I was thinking of setting up an advanced generator and draconic wireless relay crystals for distributing power and avoid putting cables everywhere. I need a total of 72 draconium dust and this is why I'm at bedrock trying to find them. I was thinking of powering the advanced generators with canola oil. It's one of the few renewable sources of fuel that we have access to early in the game. So I made a 9x9 canola farm with fertile soil from rustic and sprinklers from cycling in order to accelerate the growth. This harvesting sound is making me crazy. I made a muffler and I hope it works otherwise I can't live in this place. Uh, it seems to work. Cool. I forgot to mention that we cannot use canola oil directly in an advanced generator. We need to refine the canola oil. Uh, to refine the canola oil we can use the fermenting barrels from Actually Additions which is from the same mod but I prefer to use fractionating steels from Thermal Expansion. They do the same job however I can easily configure their input and output and moreover I can upgrade them to process faster. So less devices will be necessary. I just need to add some power, some coal and these should start working. Um, it's very slow but again it's working so. Now it's time to make the generator itself. For the start I'm going to make the iron turbines. The good thing about advanced generators is that they are a modular multi-block, so you can upgrade any part at any point in time or add or remove blocks. You can have a maximum of 50 turbines per generator controller. Iron turbines are fairly cheap and can generate 100 RF per tick. Uh, later we can upgrade them to uh, manulin or indirium tier. They make 500 RF per tick. So, depending on how much fuel we can feed the generator, it will produce a maximum of 25,000 RF per tick when fully upgraded. I'll finish up the crafting and I'll be right back. Setting up the generator is fairly easy, but I want to make a small buffer for the refined fuel. This way, when we are not using much power, the fractionating steels will continue to make fuel and we will have a small reserve. For the time being, I think fuel production will be our only bottleneck. Anyway, there is no rule or guideline on how to set up the generator. First we need a fluid intake valve. This is our fuel input. And if I can set this thing up, it would be lovely, yes. Okay, so then we will need some turbines. And I will put one here, put one here, and this is... no. Uh, actually, I think it's better to put the controller here for the time being, so that we can see if everything works. You see the multi-block structure has formed, and we are producing RF at the rate of 100 per tick, which, is, which makes sense, because we only have one turbine. If I add more turbines, we will make more. Um, then RF is extracted through the Forge energy emitter. For EU, you can use the other emitters, which are available in the JEI. So as I have said early in the episode, we are going to use energy crystals from Draconic Evolution. They need a lot of draconium to make, but they are amazing. First of all, they look beautiful in the base. They also transfer power wirelessly, so no need to run cables. They have a range of 64 blocks which is a lot, means that uh, if I put a device outside of the base, I don't need to run cables for it. They also have a huge buffer for RF. I'll do the crafting and I'll bring you back. So, Forge Energy Emitter, Basic Energy I.O. Crystal, and Basic Wireless Energy Crystal. Shift right click to select the I.O. crystal to connect it to the wireless crystal. And now if I select the wireless crystal, I can power up to 16 devices wirelessly. If we upgrade it to Vibrant, it can support 32. And if we upgrade it again to Awakened, it will support 64 devices. For a reason that I do not understand, I cannot power the ME controller with the wireless crystal. So I'm using another I.O. port. I just had to make sure that this is set on output because it's outputting from the energy crystal system. It's not inputting into the controller. Just make sure you don't make that mistake. Um, I imagine if I add a power bank or a capacitor to the ME controller, I can power that with the wireless system. But for now, since I had an extra I.O. port, this should do. Um, I also don't like this setup for some reason. I think I should start moving this or do something. Um, I try to redecorate and get back to you. Okay guys, I did some redecoration and this is our current network. I also upgraded the fractionating steels, so they work slightly faster. 
I put the remaining turbines in the back of the wall um, and I also made some additional bronze turbines. They make 300 RF each and bronze is a fairly cheap resource so I'll probably just switch all the iron ones with bronze. I'm thinking that this room and the one next door which I just dug out will be our machine rooms. I need to make the machines and a lot of item ducts, servos and retrievers. I'll do that and I'll be back. Some hardened glass and some energized glowstone and some impulse item ducts as well as a lot of signalum oh, I thought instead of showing you all the crafting and gathering resources I just bring you back in for the finished product I added a lot of thermal mediators as well uh, by water they increased the speed of devices by 20% all the devices have been configured and their output goes into this ME interface which I just installed and if I add a retriever, this should work. Cool. Uh, I also ran out of uh, outputs on the energy crystal, so I made another one. And since we're using more channels, I also added a relay crystal. Um, so the I.O. goes into the relay crystal, the relay crystal then connects to the wireless crystals. And of course, some finishing touches. Um, still, it's the second episode, so I don't have any resources to use in the... Uh, Fang process. <laughs> this is something that we have to look into maybe in the later episodes. Uh, for now this will do and it's consistent with the rest of the base. I also made a temporary or doubling system with thermal expansion. Pulverizers have a small chance of providing us with a byproduct. The only problem is that the byproduct of gold is cinnabar and since it cannot be smelted it will shut down the entire system eventually. I have to set up filters to extract the cinnabar from the back and put it back into the ME system directly. This is a temporary setup. Once we get void ore miners, we can set up a better system with mechanism. This slightly larger chest is pretty cool. Um, it fills all the gaps within a block unlike a normal chest. And you can also open it when there is a block on top. I did a lot of mining off camera. I tried to cut all the boring stuff from the video. Uh, but this time I thought I'd show you how much mining I do between the cuts. I mined almost 64,000 cobblestone until now and of course I avoid most of them because there's no way I can bring them back. Okay now that our base has taken shape it's time to move on and progress through the pack. Uh, this dude, he reminds me of Kyle from South Park. Uh, if I switch the armor and the leggings he will exactly look like him. Uh, anyway, I want to make a small mock farm using industrial foregoing which is almost a copy of MFR from 1.10 and 1.7 but with a few small changes. To build the devices, we are going to need tiny dry rubber, which is made in a latex processing unit. Latex comes from another device called tree fluid extractor. It is a relatively complicated process compared to MFR. Uh, I'll do all the crafting and I'll bring you back in for setting up the system. And of course you blow up. I hate creepers. Uh, I don't mind if there is a risk in the game that I would die, but why are they so messy? <laughs> I can't wait to get into Batania to avoid these explosions. I hate cleaning up the mess. Okay, let's get back to the main task at hand, which is how to make plastic for industrial foregoing. Uh, these three fluid extractors don't need power, but they do need to be facing the log. I put a block placer down there to feed them logs automatically. Then we need to extract the fluid and send it to a latex processing unit. This device needs power and would make tiny rubber by mixing water and latex. Also, since we have the draconic energy crystals, powering this device is fairly easy. So I just add an infinite water source, a fluid duct, um, a servo, and this should work. Cool, our first piece of tiny dry rubber. The tiny dry rubber on its own is not enough. We need to craft them in a 3x3 grid to make dry rubber. For that I'm using a crafter from RF Tools. And of course the last step is to smelt that dry rubber into plastic and for that I'm using a redstone furnace. Finally, our first piece of plastic. Um, I think this is a fairly compact setup. It's not super efficient of course because you can set up a timer to remove the lock before it's destroyed and then put it back again in the block placer so that you would create a loop and you don't have to feed wood to the system ever again. But wood is fairly cheap and how much plastic do we need? Um, you can use the plastic for IC2 cables, um, but for that I prefer to use HTPE from Mechanism.
Anyway, I'll hook up both sides to a cache from Thermal Expansion and we can go and start our next project. So as a final note, this is our input chest, we put the logs, they go into a block placer and this is our output cache, which uh, the plastic, the final product will go into that and uh, we can use it. Um, I'll try to make this into a structure and uh, once it's done, I'll bring you back in. But for now, I want to start with the next project. I wanted to make a small mob farm and since the grinder from Draconic Evolution is super expensive in this mod pack, uh, it needs like 6 nether stars, I'm going to use a mob crusher from Industrial Foregoing. Um, it's going to be a small mob farm with cursed earth, only 7x7. I want to gather as much as mob essence as I can to use them later in a spawner to spawn the mobs that I actually need. Um, so mob juice is the main reason that I'm going to uh, make this farm. I will also install drawers to save some of the occasional ender pearls, dimlets and other mob drops that we might need later. Just remember that the mob crusher has a range of 5x5 and um, this is why I'm using vector plates. Okay, so the finished farm. Um, I know it looks ugly, but uh, cobblestone is basically the only resource I have now. And well, at least I made the effort of making a chisel, mixing some blocks and trying to make it look slightly less boring. Um, these are the resources that we are saving. Um, we're getting our mob juice and up there is cursed earth. So I have to use chiseled, uh, chisel and bits to make the roof. Otherwise, uh, I, I made a miscalculation. The last thing I want to set up for today from Industrial Foregoing is a resource fisher. This is a very neat block. It's basically an auto fish farm. Um, since we don't have Ender IO in this mod pack, um, this is the cheapest way of getting enchanted books. You can use thermal expansion for books, but it's a complicated setup and for me at this stage with limited resources, this is the best option. I'll be avoiding most of the different types of fish and also the junk that we might get. Um, I'll just keep the vanilla fishes, salmon, puffer fish and enchanted books. Also, uh, you can upgrade the speed and efficiency of industrial foregoing machines with upgrades from Tesla mod. And slowly but surely we're getting enchanted books. So this is a good setup, I'm happy. Now it's time to get into Botania. I said this in the first episode, Botania is a mod that is very beneficial if you start early in the game. I don't know why some people don't like Botania, it's a very fun mod and also gives you a lot of cool gadgets. If you know what you're doing, you will enjoy this mod. Anyway, one of the ways of getting into Botania is to go around the world and gather all 16 mystical flowers. Another way, which is much easier, is to make the floral fertilizer by mixing red and yellow dyes with bone meal. That's yeah, <laughs> that's much more than we ever will need. Uh, you just need like 20 of them to get all 16 flowers. Just right click on the grass and you get a bunch of flowers. So the first thing you want to make is a petal apothecary and Alexica botania. So you put the petal apothecary down and add some water. And you drop four white petals and one seed and you get your first pure daisy pure daisy is the first flower that you should make in botania it converts stone and wood into living rock and living wood that are required to craft everything in botania it can also make uh, ice obsidian uh, i mean if you put water next to it it could also make ice for you and also before i forget uh, you don't need hundreds of one flower you just need to plant one petal on grass and uh, bone meal it uh, where's my bone meal? Yeah, okay, and then use shears on it and you will get a tall mystical flower And if you put it in a crafting grid, you will get four petals So to get living rock you need to put smooth stone around each flower and each flower converts eight blocks um, And of course then you have to wait And wait And wait more so after around one minute, it will convert the stone. And you do the same thing with wood. Um, it's exactly the same process. And wait. Now that we have our living wood, we can make a wand of the forest. It's like a wrench in Botania. It doesn't matter which petals you use. I like lime, so I'm using lime petals. Also, we can make a mana pool. The first mana generating flower that I normally make is the endoflame. It converts any solid fuel into mana. 
The reason for it is that it's easy to automate and unlike Hydro and Gus, it doesn't die off. I need two brown, one light grey and one red petal to make each flower. I'll grow them and I'll be right back. One of the good changes in Botania which makes life so easy is that once you're done with crafting, if you right click with an empty hand, it will use the same ingredients from your inventory and put it in the apothecary. It works the same for the runic altar. And I forgot the mana spreader. I thought if I go step by step, this could take hours. So I've brought you in for the finished product. I planted 8 endo flames, put a precision dropper on pulse mode and added the timer from RF tools which makes the dropper to drop a piece of coal every 100 ticks, which is 5 seconds in game. Another mana spreader for the runic altar and with the wand of the forest you can check where the mana is going. I want to craft some uh, rods, rings and charms from Botania and they all require different runes. Uh, there are 4 basic runes being fire, water, earth and air. You need these runes in order to make the second tier, being spring, summer, autumn and winter. I think we also need a rune of mana for the ring of mana, but I'm not sure, I have to check the recipe. Since um, we have spent a lot of time on Botania and I think it's getting boring, um, I'll go ahead and make the runes and bring you back in when I'm done. A band of aurora which passively generates mana and a ring of mana which can hold half a mana pool worth of mana when I'm using the rods or using anything botania related. Benevolent goddess's charm which at the cost of mana will not allow creepers or other explosions to destroy blocks. I'm just charging my ring with a little bit of mana and if I wear it you can see the blue bar next to the xp bar which shows how much mana I'm holding in the ring. And the Sojourner's Sash, which is a very cool item in my opinion. It allows you to run faster, walk faster and it does not use any mana. You just need to have a little bit of mana in your ring or in your tablet. It also allows you to jump to blocks and gives you step assist in a very smooth way, unlike the vanilla version. Uh, let me demonstrate it for you. This is two blocks and look how smooth this step assist is. <laughs> it's amazing. Also the most famous rod in Botania, the Rod of the Shifting Crust, which swaps any blocks with a selected block in your inventory, provided that you have sufficient amount of them in your inventory anyway. It's perfect for building, terraforming and even mining ores. Uh, it also swaps obsidian with the selected block in your inventory, so you just give stone and get obsidian. It's, it, it's amazing. A Hand of the Ender, which is a portable ender chest. Um, you need a little bit of mana in your ring to use it, but it does not consume the mana. A Rod of the Lands, which uh, places a dirt block on the ground at the cost of mana, as well as Rod of the Seas, which places a water source. It's basically like carrying a bucket in your inventory. And finally, Rod of the Depths, which at the cost of mana will place a cobblestone on the ground. If you combine that with a Rod of the Shifting Crust, this rod will provide the Shifting Crust with unlimited number of uh, cobblestone. So you can just go mining with <laughs> the Rod of the Shifting Crust. Uh, it's also useful if you carry a magnet because uh, blocks go literally everywhere and uh, it's difficult to get them without a magnet. You can use your rod of the seas in a petal apothecary or just place a source block or fix the mess with the rod of the land. I'm also making a full set of armor from mana steel. It's not as good as diamond gear that I'm wearing right now. It's actually the same level as iron gear. But it does not take damage as long as you have mana in your ring. It's basically an armor with mending on it. Um, I also can enchant this armor and when I upgrade it to terror steel, it will still hold its enchantments. I also almost forgot the most important uh, thing in Botania, which is the Horn of the Wild. Let me demonstrate what it does. Um, when you play in the biomes of plenty, you get uh, millions of grass everywhere. And this, you can just remove them. It's so cool. 
By the way, I switched to sushi because it gives me three different nutrients and that means six extra hearts. And thanks to our resource t-shirt, we have a lot of fish. And also in real life, sushi is my favorite food. The last thing I want to do today is to try and find some rabbits. So that in the next episode I can craft the heart containers from Cyclic and get the 10 extra hearts. I know rabbits spawn in a desert, but I did not see any deserts around me. Uh, with this nature compass, you can locate any biome that you want and just teleport to it. It's very useful because it saves you from a lot of exploration, which uh, is totally unnecessary and just makes your uh, game files bigger and bigger and just lags your game. Um, I also have enough resources to make a waystone. With this, once I'm done, I can just teleport back home. Okay, let's try and see if this works. There is a desert biome 1438 blocks away from me. And if we teleport there, um, I hope this works. Doesn't crash. What, what the? Oh. Okay. Uh, okay, you teleport in a desert and this is literally the last place that I want to be teleported to. In a meteor hole. <laughs> Anyway, I get some sand, I get some cacti, I get some rabbits, and maybe I just go to also a, a mountain biome and get some blaze rods. Um, well, well, we'll see how much I can do. I'll do that and I'll be right back. Here, fishy fishy, I have some carrots for you. Uh, okay, floating rabbit. That's not what... Oh, okay, lag. Uh, hi. <laughs> I think this is also a good time to wrap up the episode. I know that we did not achieve much in this one, but hopefully in the next episode we get into mechanism, auto mining and maybe a little bit of bee breeding for the royal jelly. Anyway, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, till the next episode, bye bye.